Kumusta sa inyong lahat? Ito po sila Modelist at tuloy po kayo sa aking channel. Welcome back to my vlog where we continue our Filipiniana series by delving into one of our national costumes, the Barat Saya, also known as the Traje de Mestiza in Spanish. The Barat Saya is the national dress of the Philippines which combines elements from pre-colonial native Filipino and Spanish clothing or garment styles. The name Barat Saya literally means shirt and skirt and is a traditional outfit worn by Filipino women. In addition to the terno which we covered in my previous tutorial, the Barat Saya has another popular variant which is known as the Traje de Mestiza or Maria Clara gown. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create the barro or camisa and the kerchief or panuelo in Spanish, which are essential parts of the Barat Saya outfit. So, let's get this started. The baro or camisa, which is the top part of the Barat Saya outfit, is designed to be boxy in shape. This style is functional, especially in the hot and humid climate of the Philippines, as it allows for better air circulation. Additionally, the loose fit of the camisa does not restrict the mobility of women and allows them to move freely while doing daily activities. The camisa has a scoop neckline. bell-shaped sleeve above the wrist, pleated or gathered at the cap of the sleeve, dropped shoulder, and cropped at the waist 1 to 2 inches below the waist. During the 1800s, when underwear or bras were not yet commonly worn, women in the Philippines wore what we call the panuelo or fichu on top of the camisa. The panuelo is a perfect square and folded in half and worn as a cover for the chest and the bust area during that time. Both camisa and panuelo are usually made out of piña or fabric made from pineapple fibers or abaca, also known as manila hem. These fabrics were popular choices because of their durability and cooling properties, which were essential for staying comfortable in the tropical climate. To start off the pattern, trace your dartless bodice on your pattern paper. By the way, I have a separate tutorial for dartless bodice and I will put the link up here. From the waistline, mark down 2 inches or 5 centimeters. Square align and disregard the excess. From shoulder tip, mark in 1.5 inches or 3.75 centimeters. From this mark, measure out 3.5 inches or 8.75 centimeters and mark. And extend the shoulder line towards the mark, creating a new shoulder line. From armhole at chest line, mark in 1.5 inches or 3.75 centimeters. Square a diagonal line from new shoulder line to the mark at chest line. From underarm seam, mark down 1.5 inches or 3.75 centimeters. From this mark, redraw the armhole hitting the diagonal line at armhole. From the new underarm seam, mark out 4 eighths of an inch or 1.2 centimeters. From this mark, square down a line to create a new side seam. 
From the tip of new shoulder line, mark down 4 eighths of an inch or 1.2 centimeters. From this mark, draw a semi-curved line blending in with the previous line. From the first mark at shoulder, mark out 1.5 inches or 3.75 centimeters. From the front neckline, mark down 2 inches or 5 centimeters. Next, connect both marks, creating a front scoop neckline. And connect the shoulder mark to the previous front neckline, and this is for the back neckline for the camisa. This is the back neckline and the front neckline for the camisa. Next, measure the new armhole and record. Mind you that my measurement will be different from yours. From the new waistline, mark down 1.25 inches or 3.1 centimeters for the hem facing and square lines to complete. and add your desired sewing allowance. Label the pattern on fold and label the hem facing. From the bust line, mark down 4 inches or 10 centimeters. And square a line to complete. This is the chest to bust facing. Next, duplicate the pattern for the back and duplicate the back and front facings. For the sleeve, draw a half T line. We will draft the sleeve on fold. From the top line, mark down 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters for the cap of the sleeve. And square a line. From the angle, mark in the armhole measurement that we previously recorded. and square a diagonal line. Divide this line into four sections. Mind you, my measurement is different from yours. At the first half, mark up to its of an inch or 0 0.6 centimeter. At the last half, mark down a one eighth of an inch or 0.3 centimeters, and draw the cap for the sleeve with a French curve. From the cap, mark down 20 inches or 50 centimeters for the sleeve length. And square a line. The width is the same measurement as the armhole measurement. So mark this and square a line. Divide the width by 5, creating 5 cutout lines. And 
cut everything out, making five strips or pieces. Next, spread the strips by 2 inches or 5 centimeters in between. Label this part on fold. And from the previous cap line, mark up 2 inches or 5 centimeters. From this mark, let's redraw the cap. Add your desired sewing allowance. For the sleeve of the camisa, you can either gather the cap or pleat the cap. Next, cut all the self, facings, and sleeve patterns on the fold of your fabric. By the way, before cutting the sleeves, mark at the first strip for the gathering reference. For both back and front self, mark down the hem facing 1.25 inches or 3.1 centimeters. And fold it and press. Next, face both self pieces right side to right side. Pin in place at the shoulder to prepare for sewing. Sew the shoulder line according to your sewing allowance. And press the seams open for a clean finish. Next, place the facing and self pieces right side to right side and pin in place at the neckline. And sew the neckline accordingly. Next, send or push all of the sewing allowance to the facing side and top stitch by 1 mm. And press the neckline for a clean finish. Next, sew the facing and self pieces together at the side seam and at the armhole. Next, 
at the hem of the sleeves, mark up 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters. And fold and press. This is the hem facing for the sleeve. From the edge, top stitch by 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters. So as you can see, I finished the hem facing for the sleeves and I had few pieces of lace trimmings left and I will attach this at the hem of the sleeve. I'll pin the lace trimmings in place in preparation for sewing. Because there's no time for hand sewing and that will take a lot of my time, I will sew the lace trimmings at my sewing machine. After that, I will gather at the cap of the sleeve from notch to notch. After gathering, attach the sleeves to the bodice of the camisette. Place the sleeve and the bodice right side to right side. Start to pin at the underarm seam from end to end. And sew the sleeve to the bodice according to your sewing allowance. And there you go, your camisa should also look like this. Next, place again right side to right side and pin at the underarm seam to the side seam. So the side seam from hem facing to the sleeve hem facing from end to end. And this is how your camisa should look like. And yes, the sleeves are bell-shaped and it is meant to be oversized. And to complete off the camisa, sew the hem facing at the bodice.
fold the hem facing and sew by 2 eighths of an inch or 0.6 centimeters from the edge. For the panuelo, prepare a 37 by 37 perfect square on your paper. Choose one angle and from this angle, mark in 2 inches or 5 centimeters. From the other angle, fold the square until the mark. At the folded line, locate the half and draw a line. From the center line, mark in 7 inches or 17.5 centimeters, both sides. So that will be 14 inches in total. And mark out two sets of 7 inches or 17.5 centimeters each side and square up five lines. From the folded line, mark up three sets of 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters. And square in three lines for folding references. Next, flip over to the right side of the panuelo and fold the panuelo three times. Make the lines your reference for folding. After folding, pin in place to hold the folds. From the folds, mark up another 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters. Flip the panuelo to the wrong side and fold by 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters wider. From the folds, mark up another 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters. And transfer the pins to hold the folds. Flip again to the right side and fold by 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters wider. And lastly, from the folds, mark another 4 eighths of an inch or 1.25 centimeters. Flip over to the right side and fold and use mark references to fold. Transfer the pins to hold the folds in place.
And there you go. We're done. To hold the pleats or folds, you can sew the lines by hand or on your sewing machine. By the way, if you are wondering, the short angle is the wrong side. And the longer angle is the right side. To sew the panuelo, fold the edges twice and press. And top stitch the edges by 2 eighths of an inch or 0 0.6 centimeters. And sew three of the stitch lines before folding or pleating. And create the folds or pleats just like what we did in the pattern. And by the way, press the folds for a clean finish. Next, mark the three stitch lines that we did earlier. And finally, sew in place to hold the pleats or the folds. By the way, I found few beautiful lace appliques and I will place it here at the right side here at the angle to create motives for the panuelo. Since hand sewing takes time, I will sew the appliques using my sewing machine. And this is the panuelo complete with the lace motors. And voila! So this is the camisa top without the panuelo. So this is the front view. This is the side and the back view. And this is the sleeve. And as you can see, the sleeve is oversized or boxy, pleated on the cap, and has a shape of a bell. And this is the camisa with the panuelo. This is the front view. This is the side view. And this is the back view. Thank you. 
Anyway, guys, I hope this tutorial gave you enough tips on how to create the barrow or kamisa and the panuelo. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to comment down below. And I'll make it sure to answer your questions as quickly as possible. And if you are not subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, La Modelist, make it sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up and share this video to your friends. And I will see you guys again on the next tutorial. Apiento!